start your day with me, Aji Toyo, and my partner, Luisa Kusnandar. And today, Luisa, I believe that we have a special dialogue with a really special guest to talk about a topic that is quite important, especially in the realm of conservation. That's right. We'll be talking about rhinoceros. Now, rhinos is one of the animals that for years have been the target of poaching for their horns, which are usually used as ingredients for traditional medicine and several other reasons. Therefore, its existence is under threat and needs to be preserved. Now, we have from um, our special guest this morning is from Yayasan Badak Indonesia or Yabi in short. Uh, Bapak Muhammad Agil, thank you. Welcome to Starting Point. And Welcome. we'll be talking a lot about um, more about more insight on the issue of uh, rhinos conservatory. Yeah. Now, Pak Agil, can, uh, first of all, can you please explain to us the background for the establishment of Yayasan Badak Indonesia or Yabi mm -hmm. in short? Okay, uh, actually, uh, Yayasan Badak Indonesia, so called Indonesian Rhino uh, Foundations, it was established in 2006. Uh, actually, it is a uh, merge of uh, two non-profit organizations previously, mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, the first one is uh, Yayasan Mitra Rino, and then the second one is uh, Yayasan uh, Suaka Rino Sumatra, and then they have different uh, efforts. So the first one, Yayasan Mitra Rino, working on the protections of the area, and then the second one. So mainly working in the field, in the uh, in situ conservation and the Yayasan Suaka Rino Sumatra to uh, manage and then uh, to organize the uh, uh, rhino sanctuary in mm. Lampung. That's uh, with the main objective or goal is to breed the rhinos. Mm. How many locations are there at the moment for the conservation of rhinoceros in Indonesia? You mean the... Uh, in situ or ex situ one? Oh. The, the, for no. breeding. Yeah. Yeah, no, for okay. breeding is only in Waikambas at the moment. Mm. Uh, that's all we uh, have now. Actually, two days ago, we have new babies, the oh. rhinos. Congratulations. <laughs> and then last uh, month also, we uh, have another one. So mm. we, this year, we have two babies uh, mm. from. And to totally now is about uh, 10 rhinos in the sanctuary in Waikambas. But also we established uh, a few years ago. Uh, the second one is in Kalimantan, in mm. Kutai Barat uh, district, uh, is Kalimantan province. Mm. And that's uh, due to that we found uh, some Sumatran rhino in Kalimantan. That is surprisingly because mm. uh, many people expect that the Sumatran rhino in Kalimantan already extinct mm. a few year, many years ago. Mm. But uh, fortunate that we uh, found the rhinos uh, like 2000, uh, early, early 2016. Mm. 2016. And have you been involved with Yabi since <coughs> its inception in 2006, Pagil? Yeah, actually, uh, I was the, uh, I am the uh, one of the board members mm -hmm. uh, since the beginning, since the development of the establishment of the Yayasan uh, Badak uh, Yabi, Yayasan mm -hmm. Badak Indonesia, mm -hmm. yeah, since so, 2006. Since you've been with Yabi since the very mm -hmm. beginning, can you please explain to us um, how is the condition at the moment? What are the threats to uh, preserving the rhinoceros in Indonesia? Mm -hmm. I believe that the the biggest threat for the rhinos, not only in Indonesia, mm. I mean, for uh, in the world, especially with the Indian rhino and also uh, African rhino, is the poaching or so illegal hunting. Mm. As you already mentioned at the beginning in the introduction, that uh, uh, many uh, requests from uh, the traditional Chinese medicine to mm. use the horn of the rhinos, and then. Uh, the rhinos in Indonesia, especially for the Sumatran rhino, is the, we call it the, uh, the most, uh, what do you call, uh, uh, the, the most uh, old one mm. from the, uh, from the evolution, evolution mm. of the uh, rhinos. 
So then uh, many, a lot of uh, requests. I mean, the uh, from the from the uh, economic value is very high uh, values of the of the of the price of the health. Mm, in particular, just for Indonesia. Uh, actually, main the the market is from international. Mm. At least, uh, when we ha when we had the Reinstead meeting uh, for the Rhino conservations in Nepal, so we got the information from Interpol that the mm. uh, the market for the horns is like the international uh, network. The demand is from demand is very international, high. worldwide. Right. Mm. And it's so sad. I mean, like, isn't it? Yeah. By now, people should be very aware yeah. about this, that the rhinoceros yeah. are in the brink of extinction, but yet they still do it anyway. Yeah, I mean, I I found one video from Africa. Mm. It, it was really, really sad. They just cut the rhinos, the horns, and then just leave it the rhinos alive. That's so no. sad. They, oh, they no. see walk without ha without a uh, horn, mm. and then bleeding everywhere. Oh my God! So it's really really horrible. Why yeah. the horn of the rhinos, Pagel? Is it? Uh, this is an interesting question <laughs> because mm. I mean, in fact, I mean mm. from the uh, chemical point of view, mm. it is nothing because the horn is like nail, like uh. a hair. The, yeah. the, the, the this is a fact, yeah? yeah that actually fact. it's just, there's nothing. But, yeah, it's nothing. Mm. But from the traditional uh, belief point yeah, of view, yeah. uh -huh. they believe that uh, this uh, can cure something. Oh, mm. I see. So this is some, it's really, really... Uh, special I mean, properties. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Agil, can you please explain to us um, what are the challenges of uh, conserving rhinoceros at the moment? Like, um, by nature, how how often do they breed? Is it difficult to for them to mm -hmm. breed? But yeah. mm. I mean, uh, from our uh, I did my research uh, since 1993 mm. for the uh, reproductive wow. biology of the rhinos, and then together with our friend from uh, from uh, Malaysia, from uh, America. To breed rhino, uh, Sumatra rhino, especially Sumatra rhino, because we don't have any uh, single Javan rhino already in the captivity. For the Sumatra rhino, uh, breeding uh, program is really, really uh, challenging because uh, the Sumatra rhino, we, we call it the uh, absolute solitary. Mm. So, absolute solitary, we, ne we never uh, found. Uh, Sumatran rhino in the in the field in the wild together male and female together mm. only in the uh, the time for breeding they will meet only yeah. during the breeding oh. not out of that mm. so then it's really difficult uh, to uh, breed to the rhinos I mean luckily that we can produce five babies now oh. in the Sumatran rhino sanctuary in Waikambas. I'm really appreciate to all the veterinarian there. Mm -hmm. who That's work uh, there. five babies within how 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 long, Pak? Since uh, the first uh, one is uh, uh, produced, I think 2007. 2000. 2000. Mm -hmm. uh, 2007. Seven. Wow. So we actually we start to breed the rhinos in uh, Waikambas 1998, mm. and then. Since then, uh, although we we had some uh, breeding, uh, some mating, but we never produced any babies. I see. Uh, really fortunate then, uh, by uh, beginning 2000s, we received one male from the United States. Mm. They sent it back to White Campus. Yeah. And then start from that, we can breed successfully and then produce uh, babies. So you you can imagine from 1998 until 2007, it's long time to go until we produce a baby. Wow, that's <laughs> such a struggle. Yeah, wow. and also such a big challenge. It's not yeah. uh, easy because if we put them together to breed, not in the right time, they will fight. Oh, 
It amazing. won't end well. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's so something. tricky. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, tricky. And so that's why uh, I mentioned that uh, in the beginning, we have to put them in the right time. Oh. And then uh, the good things that we have, the veterinarian in uh, Waikambas, they have the capacity and they uh, capable to monitor when to find out, to, point, to pinpoint the time mm. when they have to put them together mm. without any dangers to the animals. Wow. Wow, it's a fine line between love and hate. <laughs> <laughs> I heard it has to be yeah. that right time and right Just moment. The, exactly. Yeah, perfect because time. it's really if if they if they uh, if they don't fight, mm -hmm. then they behave like a friend, uh -huh. and they will not meet. Oh wow! So don't friend zone each other. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, it's no. really really wow. really important. Wow. It's really, really important to find the right time. Yeah. yeah. So that I'm really appreciate and I really uh, uh, put my uh, appreciation to this uh, our fat in the field in white mm. numbers wow. because I, I did it since 1998, 1998 try to find using the ultrasounds until until 2007 almost uh, every month I went there mm. but since then we have a good team veterinarian in white numbers then I don't need to go there anymore. That's good. That's Just good. Just a few. Yeah. I think in case of the, so for instance, like when we wait for the uh, parturations, so then all the fat should go there and then wait for the parturation and then we help all each other mm. try to uh, get the good that's results. Good. Wow. So we hope that the current rhinoceros that you have right now will. Uh, stay healthy yeah. and not get yeah. sick at all because it's just so hard to really breed this rhinoceros in yeah. the first place. Yeah. Uh, Pagil, can you please explain to us uh, what are the past notable projects that Yabi has done mm. okay. so far? Mm. I think uh, the first uh, program is breeding mm -hmm. because this is the main, the main uh, since the beginning, uh, according to the international uh, 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 consensus that we have to start to breed the rhin Sumatran rhino in the in the sanctuary, otherwise because of the declining of the populations. Mm. So when we start, when I st I started my study, the population still 400. 400 across 400. Indonesia? Uh, no, no, all in over the world. The world. Oh. But oh. that's only in Malaysia and in Indonesia because oh. the other populations. The subspecies Lasioti in Vietnam and Thailand and uh, Myanmar already extinct. Mm. So the rest only in Malaysia and Indonesia <coughs> is about four, uh, 400. 400 at okay. that time. And nowadays, I mean, at the 1990, uh, mm, previously, I think it's, uh, around the beginning of 80, it is still for 800 mm. and 1994. 1994 mm. is about 400, so it's 50 oh, percent declining. Yeah. And then uh, down, nowadays, only 80. Wow. So 80. that's why, yeah. So that's why, in 1996, uh, the international community decided to set up the sanctuary, and then to bring all the rhinos from the cap from the zoo mm. back to the sanctuary because we. We have the program for uh, having the rhinos in the zoo, uh, 80 from 90, but unfortunately, all the rhinos died in the mm. zoo. Why? What was the cause? The cause, uh, this is interesting, because uh, finally, we knew that the rhinos cannot move from Indonesia and Malaysia, mm. <laughs> because they need really specific uh, broads. Habitat? Mm. No, for feeding. Oh, for feeding. Yeah, they, okay. they are absolute browser. I see. They only eat leaves. Oh. Yeah. And then, so then, uh, and then according to our uh, research, that the, the content of the leaves mm. is specific and mm. we cannot find uh, every, uh, only anywhere. Only in Malaysia. Only in Indonesia. Indonesia and Malaysia. I see. And it's in country. Yeah. yeah. So at the moment, there's only 80 rhinoceros in Indonesia, in Indonesia and Malaysia. No. Malaysia extinct. Okay, just by, Indonesia. Yeah, only Indonesia. Wow. By uh, 2019. Mm. 
hmm. di uh, uh, Malaysia declare that uh, the rhinos in Malaysia extinct. Hmm. So now only in Indonesia. And in the first place, I'm curious, what fueled you, Pak Agil, to take part in this research? Because it's quite specific to be yeah. the conservation of rhinoceros. Yeah. And now we know a little bit more background of how um, this is very pressing because we mm -hmm. have 80 from a, a start of 800 yeah. <laughs> from yeah. the beginning yeah. of 98. So what, what is the main driving force behind your research or why you wanted to go into it in the first place? Uh, <laughs> that's good. Um, uh, so I, when I was a student, I really uh, interested uh, to work with the wildlife. Mm. And then my colleague, my friends at the times, uh, he, he passed away uh, during COVID, uh, Mr. Marcel, mm -hmm. uh, veterinarian also, Marcel, mm -hmm. and also our uh, director of conserv uh, bi biodiversity conservation, Dr. Indra. Mm. So they did uh, study on the Sumatran rhinos uh, when Ragunan still have the rhinos there. Mm. And then at that time, uh, they uh, found out that the female rhinos produce milk and they said, oh, probably she's pregnant. Mm. And then waiting, waiting, waiting in some years and then finally nothing. Mm. And then uh, somebody from the United States came and then they uh, helped to find, to, uh, to, to do some examination. They, she said that she's not pregnant. She was not pregnant. So then from that point, uh, and I, a little bit uh, involved in communication and discussion with them and I said, mm -hmm. when I uh, got a scholarship to study in Germany and then mm -hmm. I said, okay, I will do a research on this because uh, we need to really to find, to get the technology in order that we can monitor of the cycle of the rhinos mm -hmm. and then to determine of the pregnancy. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the, the the first step that I go into this detail. Right. Mm -hmm. And then after that, we uh, got some more and more information that uh, the rhinos should stay here in Indonesia, not go out because uh, they cannot survive. Mm -hmm. Because of the, the feed stuff, the feeding stuff is only here, we can find it. Wow. It sounds so challenging, Pa. Yeah. I yeah. mean, what you're doing right now yeah. <laughs> to uh, preserve rhinoceros yeah. in, um, in the world, really. Uh, can yeah, they're, they're in the world because this, the smart is only in Indonesia now. Exactly, there is in, in Indonesia. <laughs> only in Indonesia. Yeah. Um, this, apart from technology, what can be done to help this uh, conservation of rhinoceros, really? Okay. So there are uh, two things. The first is uh, in situ conservation mm -hmm. for the rhinos. That means, I mean, we believe if we can breed the rhinos properly and then successfully, so we will produce uh, more rhinos. Mm. Although nowadays uh, we still ha we only have ten rhinos in the sanctuary in Waikambas, only ten, and then out of that, uh, out of the ten, two male is brother, and the, the other male, the third one is the boy uh, offspring, offspring from the from the, the from the oldest uh, male. Mm. So that means from the genetical point of view, it's really close. Mm -hmm. So now they, I mean, now the condition of the population in Waikambas is like in the bottleneck of the genetic. I see. So we have to increase the diversity. Mm. So that is from, from the breeding, but I mean, from the in situ, we still have uh, rhinos in, uh, in Loser National Park. And then we do hope we can uh, rescue some rhinos from uh, Aceh, from uh, National Park, and then we can bring to put into the breeding program in uh, Waikambas or in other sanctuary in Indonesia when they already established. Like in Aceh, uh, all, we also uh, plan to already on the progress uh, to build the sanctuary in Aceh. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that we can have more facility and then we can get more uh, rhinos with different genetic uh, performance. So then the first one for the in-situ, we have to uh, rescue some rhinos that uh, they, they, they are in solid uh, 
uh, in uh, what you call in the conditions mm -hmm. of the uh, separate from the mm. populations, okay. yeah. so they don't have the uh, possibility to uh, uh, to involve in the population mm -hmm. breeding. So I think it's better we rescue that, and then also we need to uh, secure the habitat for the rhinos mm. because somehow sometimes if we produce a baby more babies then we have to release back to the to the to the oh, to the forest yeah. to the jungle mm -hmm. because there's the place for them mm -hmm. so that's it for the in situ and for the ex situ i mean for the uh, sanctuary so we have we have to make sure that we have enough uh, uh, genetic uh, diversity of the populations. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the government already declared uh, end of 2019 mm. by having this the emergency action plan. The government already put there that the conservation of the Sumatra has to start to use technology mm. using the bayi tabung. Oh. Interesting. The in vitro oh, fertilization. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, now it's difficult to get the rhinos from the jungle yeah. because very rare and difficult to find. So the only possibility that we can use the biological material from the population that die in the United States and Europe. Mm. Right. Because when during the 80 to 90, we send from Indonesia that we rescue some rhino and then we send it, uh, we send it to the United States and then to Europe, but they died there, but they still keep and they can preserve the biological material from, mm. the, di from the death rhinos. Mm. And that's exactly a different genetic mm. uh, from the, our population here. Yeah. So by using the technology, we can uh, use uh, stem cell, mm to produce uh, egg and sperm and then we can produce new offspring and then we can also do a cloning mm. Mm. and then so then we can have a more uh, possibility to set up the uh, breeding uh, in the future with having individual with uh, heter high heterozygosity of the genetic mm. of the population. Yes, it needs to be done since the situation yeah. is such a mm -hmm. very um, emergency situation yeah, actually yeah. yeah yeah fortunate that we already started mm. to work mm. on that so okay. by uh, in the uh, in this program we collaborate with the international team that i you may you may heard that uh, there is a program to rescue uh, the northern white rhino african northern white mm. rhino that are they they only two left in the world and they now already produce 29 uh, embryos. Oh, and they will start to uh, put in the surrogate mother <laughs> yeah. to produce new baby. So that's, we, we do hope that we can use uh, the technology in Indonesia for the mm. in the future. It's really helpful, um, you can see yeah. technology, especially um, in the breeding of rhinos yeah. as well. And yeah. so looking forward into the future, uh, Pak Agil, what are some of the hopes or projections that Yabi has, uh, especially for the conservation of rhinoceros? Is there specific targets or goals that hopefully will have X amount of babies? Or yeah, looking forward uh, further into the future, yeah. what are your thoughts on that, Pak? Yeah, I mean, uh, lucky that uh, government really support us. Mm. And then for the uh, sanctuary in Waikambas, actually we have the ambitious target to produce one calf, one uh, one calf one year, one oh. baby one year. Mm -hmm. Actually, we have now in one year we have two. two. Hopefully next year we will have another because uh, we do hope we can uh, breed more rhino. And then, but beside that, also we already start to communicate with the, uh, our our colleague in the United States, mm. try to bring all the biological material to Indonesia and then we will do the uh, uh, in vitro fertilization to produce a bayi tabung here mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then to produce new offspring with uh, 
to increase the heterogeneity of the populations in the uh, sanctuary. Mm. I think that's the ambitious target for the uh, futures uh, for uh, propagation program for the Sumatra Arena. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, also uh, government uh, really aware that the protections in the field is really important. Mm. So that uh, YABI support government also to increase the protections and we will start with the uh, breeding program of the Javan Rhino. Mm. Javan Rhino? Yeah. Oh. I mean, government already, already set up the facility in Ujukulon. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Then we will support them how to, ut to utilize and then to, uh, to bring the rhinos there for... The first step is to, uh, to do a research study because we don't know exactly zero uh, knowledge on the Javan Reno because mm -hmm. we never have any single Reno in captivity, so we never have any mm -hmm. uh, information on the bi biological uh, uh, reproductive biology information. So they will start from that point, from the scratch. Hopefully, somehow, sometimes yeah, we can produce. Break hopefully, <laughs> yeah. Well, we wish you all the best, Agil, Thank you. for um, <laughs> continuing this conservation of rhinoceros in Indonesia. Yeah. It sounds really challenging just mm -hmm. hearing it from you this morning yeah. and but i mean somebody has to do it and we are so thankful that yabi has been ongoing since yeah. uh 2006 was it 2006 year 2006 yeah. fighting Actually, from, for the from uh nine ninety uh, from nine nineteen ninety uh, five when we start with the uh to establish the rhino protection unit in the field yes mm -hmm. and then we m merged that in Yabi, 2006. There you then go, and keep on going forward. On, yeah. <laughs> thank you so much, Pat Muhammad Agil, yeah. for being here on Starting Point okay, uh, to you. talk about Welcome. rhinoceros conservation yeah. here on Starting Point.